Today I'm speaking to Greg Walters, who's a former Aston Villa footballer and uh, he's now doing big things in the property world. How's it going, Greg? You okay? Yeah, I'm not too bad, Danny. You? Yeah, all good, thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining me today. We had a little chat up there because obviously we've never spoke together before. And as you as you know nowadays, everyone's kind of on social media. We've kind of interlinked through that through various different means. So um, it's good to see obviously what you're doing. It kind of coincides with the industry that I'm in, um, but you're doing it from a different perspective. I'm selling and you're buying, selling and, and refurbishing. And we'll touch on all of that later. But you are obviously doing great things. But um, the main crux of it today, I want to discuss, obviously, your transition away from playing for Villa uh, as a youth team player and obviously pro contract and, and going from there into kind of what you're doing now. So just let everyone know kind of what you're up to nowadays, please. Yes, yeah, so I um, run a, a, a property investment development company. Um, so essentially what we do is um, I'm really big into period buildings uh, listed buildings, character buildings, and uh, I buy them, um, I repurpose them, refurbish them, and to, to, to create, create homes essentially. So we either then uh, keep the building uh, for rental income and, and, and what have you, and sort of build up a continue to build a portfolio of properties, or we sell them on um, once we've done them. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's still a, a relatively new new venture it's been a long time coming um but uh, yeah we I, I started uh chamberlain as a company um in the, around about the beginning of 2019 so yeah still still relatively new wow so you've come a long way in, in like kind of such a short space of time to be honest i thought you've been going for a lot longer than that um giving you kind of portfolio it's, 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 record yeah it's it's um it's strange. I've always been involved um, in, in property. So I've always bought, um, I started investing in property a long, longer time ago. Mm. Um, but I, um, I mean, I'm coming up to what, this will be my 17th year, self-employed. Um, I had a company that uh, was in a similar field, um, mm. but I, I was... It essentially evolved into raising money for property developers. So okay. I was like an intermediary between people that were a bit unhappy with the returns they were getting on money in the bank or within pension funds, for example, mm. and wanted to do something a little bit different with that money. So I had um, a company that was like a conduit between, you know, the, the monies that they'd got in the bank or within a pension scheme and help them invest in, um, in property-based things um, yeah. And uh, I, I, I built that up. I started it in 2005 mm -hmm. and uh, eventually sold the company. At, um, it was August 2017. Okay. So, um, yeah, it, it was, uh, it was, it was a, a, a good, uh, I learned a lot along the, along the way, um, you know, uh, built up some, it, it, was, it was good fun building up a company. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, but then, then then sold it. Um, worked for the people that bought it from me for for about a year, mm. um, which was, a, if I'm honest, it was a bit. If the truth be told, it was a bit of a jolly up for a year. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it was like a, a sort of a handover over twelve month period, just over twelve months in the end, and then uh, decided that I, I needed to to to, to break up way and then um really needed to sort of get my teeth into something else and that's when I started um Chamberlain. Wow that's amazing and again we'll touch on that in more more detail later on. You want to just let me know in brief well not in brief actually in as much detail as you want to kind of your your transition period away from kind of leaving Villa and then kind of what happened next what was your thought process and, and things like that? Yeah well I um I, I, I've been brought up a Villa fan, so um, I would go and uh, go to the, the, the home games. I think my first game uh, to see the Villa was against Liverpool at home mm. uh, in the 1989 nine, 1990 season. Okay, it was the week that signed Paul McGrath uh, <laughs> and Ken Nielsen. I think on the same day. Nice. Um, 
So uh, I watched the Villa week in, week out. Um, always loved playing football. You know, you, 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 you then you play for the, what, the school. You, you get picked to play for the district, the, the county uh, and what have you. Mm. Um, and, you, you know, it, it then starts to get a little bit more serious, doesn't it? Um, mm. You know, when, when clubs start knocking the door or what have you, you have a trial here and there. Um, so my, um, when I got into uh, sort of like the last year of, uh, uh, secondary school, that's really when, I mean, I know you went to national school, Danny, so it's a little bit different, but for, for, uh, for, for me, um, I was looking to try just, just, you know, get a pro, uh, you know, a, a professional club to come and sign you. Yeah. And, um, so when the, um, opportunity came to sign for, for for Villa it was like a dream come true you know because mm. um, you know the year you know literally a few months prior to actually that first pre-season training session you know you were watching watching them in, in the in the stands or whatever so mm. to actually be training with the you know particularly in pre-season when they mix you in with all the all the first teamers and what have you it was, it was unbelievable but I was never I was never starstruck with it yeah. Um, I always felt that whenever you got involved with the first team, I was, I just felt at home. You know, I think it raises you as a, yeah, as a, as a, as a player. Um, but unfortunately, I don't know. It's, um, it sort of, I struggled a lot with, with, with injury. Um, so I think my, the last few games for, for, for the districts, uh, I played for Warsaw Districts and we had a really good side. I think there was only one, probably, I think there was only one lad that never got a, a professional club signed them. That's how good we were. We were good, good sides, uh, Warsaw Districts. Um, the last few games, I started to feel a little bit of a pain in my shins. Um, I kind of like kept a bit quiet about it. You know, I thought, what, what's going on here? And I, I, Obviously, you have the, the medical and bits, and when you when you you first uh, go there, mm. I just kind of kept it quiet, and um, I, I don't know. I just struggled with injuries. Um, the, in fact, the first the first uh, proper pre season friendly at Bodymore, we played uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, believe it or not, <laughs> at Bodymore. <laughs> so they came over and. Um, the first year YTs, none of the first year YTs started the game. It was all on the bench. We sort of gradually came on. I yeah. came, I was on the pitch for about 10 minutes and um, jumped up for a header and I got, I got an elbow to the face and it knocked me out cold and uh, I broke my nose. <laughs> so <Wow. laughs> my nose was over here. <laughs> um, and it kind of carried on in a, in a, a similar sort of fashion moving forward. So I got myself back playing I had a few weeks off with concussion <laughs> uh, got 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 back playing and then um, after the second home game um, uh, for the under 17s as it was at the time um, the training session after I just pulled up I, I, I was in agony uh, in my shins it was the, 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 I got shin splints right um, which uh, essentially is just you know, inflammation of the, the sort of tendons on the on the shins, and it was it's something really that only rest can 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 help. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, I didn't play in my in my two years. I didn't I didn't play enough games to to sort of get enough momentum. Um, yeah. I mean, it was only a few years ago. I actually, looked there's a there's a database online, uh, Aston Villa player database, mm. and I had a look. And I thought, 18 games I played in two years. Jesus. Wow. Um, and, and the interesting thing is, is that the second year, so which was the 99 to 2000 season, yeah. I only played seven games, so that uh, seven games in one year. Wow. And when I look back um, in that year, uh, 99 to 2000, when I, when they actually, when I, I was told that I was going to be released from, from the Villa, um, it, I don't know, it was probably about May, May time, probably, April, mm -hmm. May sort of time. When I look at the sort of timeline of games that I played, of them seven games, there was probably three of them when I'd already been released. Jesus. Just, I knew that I was going. So in yeah. theory, 
in my second year, I only really had four lots of 90 minutes to, to make an impression. Um, I did score two goals. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it, it just, you know, it, it, it just didn't, didn't happen um, for, for one reason or another. Yeah. And then, so transitioning away from that then, so obviously you've been told by Villa, obviously, that you're not going to be off the contract. And you probably knew that it was coming anyway on the horizon. We spoke off air and we, we did say that Villa, around that time, they had loads and loads of players. Um, and they're obviously yeah. one of the best youth teams around. So it was easy for them to attract players from abroad and anywhere across kind of England, really. Um, so what was next? Like, how did it make you feel? And then obviously what happened next? So you, you've obviously been told and then you obviously need to process it. And then what happened after that? Where did you go from there? Well, first and foremost, the um, I've got to say, when I, when I, out of my age group, um, I think there was probably eight or nine of us, um, and and on and and that side then throughout the, the, the two years, you sort of made up then with uh, schoolboys or from from the year below, yeah. um, or a, a under 19s, maybe a couple of players from the year above. Mm. Um, but the way you know we touched on it a little bit um, on air, it was a it wasn't a nice environment at, at, at Villa. Um, and one would say it was, you know, a bit of a almost a toxic environment in that sense. Mm. There wasn't a real good team spirit there, uh, and it stemmed from, you know, the the the, the, the coaching staff um, really. So I think not all the coaching staff, I would say, but yeah. when, uh, but so when I was told that I was being released in a, in a in a ra- in a strange way, it was almost a relief. Okay. Um, I genuinely, it was. I think as humans, people just want certainty. Yeah. Um, even if good, bad, or ugly, you just want to know what's happening. And mm-hmm. and I knew what was happening from there, and it meant that I wasn't going to be coming back the next summer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I just got home. Um, that I, obviously still living at home at the time, and just sort of was trying to sort of rally round to see what I was going to do. Mm. Um, when I signed for the Villa, um, the, the, the game in which a scout uh, sort of got in touch off the back of, mm-hmm. it was against West Bromwich Albion. Right. Um, at, uh, it was at Tamworth's ground. I, I was playing for Tamworth youth team. Um, yeah. at, at, at age 16, there was a scout. So the, one of the first ports of call was to, try, was to call West Brom, see if I can get a, a, a trial there. So, yeah. Um, I went there for, for, for a few weeks and it, it, it didn't work out, um, you know. Um, and then I think gradually sort of resided to the fact that you're going to play in lower league football. Mm. Um, I had a trial at Macclesfield. Um, I, I don't know. They, they, there wasn't a budget there. There wasn't. It, it was a it was stark contrast from being at a Premier League club, put it that way, yeah. you know, without yeah. sounding, um, you know, um, big headed or anything like that. But um, yeah, it, it 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 was it was tough. And then um, I don't know. I think the first the first non league side that I played for was Atherston over Tamworth Way, um, and uh, played in in. Uh, you know, on a you know dreadful pitch, like it was like that, and I, I was just—I don't know. There was something. I think I was just frustrated. Um, I mean, and I, I was just running around kicking people. I got sent off in my first game. <laughs> just, just like killing. <laughs> I just—I um, think I just my, my, my head had gone, you know. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I went through a, a number of different clubs. Um, I, I went to Russell for a bit. Uh, Russell Olympic, which is uh, local to, to us here in the Midlands. Um, certain town for sure, while never stayed anywhere too too long, really. I would add more clubs than Tiger Woods, <laughs> non <laughs> league level. But um, yeah, yeah I, 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 um, the, one, the one club that I did really enjoy playing for was Bowl Hall Swift, so again, over Tamworth Way. Yeah. Um, the, the, the guys that ran it there. Um, uh, John Capaldi and, and Ron Tranter, uh, bless him. Um, 
that, that they'd create. They've got some good good players, and I yeah. just loved it. Loved mm-hmm. it there. Um, we got a good side, no pressure. Mm. It was just we just turn up on a Saturday and we we Brazil sides and play. You know, it was great. Um, mm-hmm. And um, but at the same time, from a work point of view, you kind of got to decide what you're gonna. You know, you don't get paid an awful lot for playing for bowl or swifts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are you gonna do? And I started working in. Um, well, I, I had various interviews at sort of random job roles. Yeah, that I knew nothing about, and it was just. It was just applying for jobs for jobs' sake, really. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and and I look back now and I'm glad I never got the jobs because <laughs> it kind of, I might have gone a different way. But yeah. um, I started working in financial services. My, my, my dad uh, was a financial advisor at the time. Um, mm-hmm. And I did a little bit of work for him. He, he worked from home, some admin work and what have you. And he just taught me some of the, the basics of, of financial services. Yeah. Uh, the administration side and and what have you um and i don't know it was probably after about six to eight months something like that um my dad said look i know i'm paying you a, a, a monthly wage or what have you but you 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 live here i'm paying you a wage you know you're not meeting people you i was literally rolling out of bed danny going to the office which was built at the bottom of the garden going to work and then <laughs> coming <Really>? back <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, i was still late some days but uh, <laughs> it was um i think that it, it, it gave me a push he yeah. sort of said you need to go and um find something else because if i wanted to wrap up the, not that he did but wrap up tomorrow and stop you'd be stuck so i went and got um an interview for a, another firm of financial advisors, but because I could put something on my CV that I'd worked in that field, and I quite liked it, to be fair. It was quite interesting. Yeah. I got a job at a firm in the city centre, in Birmingham City yeah. Centre. Yeah. Um, and worked there for a bit. And uh, the guy that I worked for at the time was, um, I learned an awful lot from him, mm. an awful lot, just watching the way that he, um, he sort of went about his business and, and life in general. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was essentially a, 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 a pension investment salesperson, but he was a machine, Danny. He was earning absolute fortunes. And it wow. was, it was, it was, it was a, when I look back now and you're talking 2001 ish, because I got released in 2000. Yeah. Um, that was about 2001 ish that I um, was working there and, it, it was it was a it was a good experience uh, for me, um, and then within that same company, I went and worked for a couple of other advisors within that company, and um, ones that were I don't know, without being disrespectful, a, a sort of a bit of a lower caliber of yeah. of, of clientele and, and and that kind of thing, um, and I thought that this isn't for me, so I went to. Um, work for a, a company called Scandia, which is now owned by, uh, well, it's now known, sorry, as Old Mutual, Old Mutual yeah. Wealth. Um, they're quite a big operator in this uh, pension investment field. Mm. And I worked there at, um, they used to have an office um, on Hackley Road, at Tricorn House, um, at the top of Broad Street. Mm. And uh, I worked there for a couple of years and again, learned loads, learned loads about, essentially money the way money is invested stocks shares and yeah. um they also did some uh, life insurance and critical illness cover type pro- products and things like that so mm. so working there um and then playing football of a of an evening i'd work through your lunch break and yeah. dash out yeah. can you leave at five instead of half five to dash the other side of town to go and play a night game and what have you and mm. yeah it was it was, it, was, it was okay I learned, learned an awful an awful lot but I remember being, when I was at Scandia there was a and again no disrespect to um, the person I'm talking about that name names but I, re, I remember I really wanted to, to, to move up in that that company um, yeah. it was essentially a, like a sales support type role yeah I was really good at it um, 
and there was a chap there that they, they had like a you could become a, a like a business development manager type person and they gave you a, a team of five like a, a group of financial advisors that you would yeah. go and represent scandia and, and promote and know about the products and they were notorious in the industry scandia being really well paid and, and what have you i thought i fancy a bit of that you know company car and yeah a lot of fancy that yeah um and I, and and i even i remember on a, it was a christmas night out uh and i even uh, collared the, the the gaffer at the time and i still call him the gaffer now if i've got him as a friend on facebook i'm calling the boss as a oh, boss um on, on all on posts and things but i said is there, is there a chance of me being promoted um and he i don't know he fell on deaf ears um, <laughs> <laughs> to put it that way but there was a there was a chap that was that i knew that he was a, a, a bdm and he'd done the job of sales support and i spoke yeah. to him and it, it transpired that he'd done that job for 10 years before he was promoted as a bdm and at like i don't know at 19 10 years seemed like a really long time to wait yeah um, so um i mean in reality now i think 10 years it ain't that long but back then i was like i need money now <laughs> so, sure yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um i so i handed my notice in and i actually went to work again for another different firm of financial advisors this time in bringley place um in yeah. the city center this is like a, a number four bringley place in a swanky glass office and it was it was cool and it, it, it all looked very cool. I was on peanuts really in, in the grand scheme of things at the time, but it was it, it it was another step into something where I might be able to progress. Yeah. So I took a few exams when I was at Scandia, um, but I, I sort of um, did another exam at uh, a company called Millfield Partnership where I worked, um, and my role was what they call a power planner. Which um, it's kind of like like how lawyers have paralegals, mm. um, financial advisors will have a para planner. So that's what I did. Um, I did it for a number of years, um, but it was actually at that company that I kind of made the jump into becoming self-employed, um, mm. kind of, kind of by accident. And I think a lot of people that's how it happens. Um, I think I always wanted to have a business and own a business and run and work for myself but never really knew what I wanted to do um but there was a there was a chap come to um it was he was like a BDM if you like from a a mortgage firm yeah that helped um but it was mortgages for overseas property okay so I mean um so it's people and you're talking 2003-ish four-ish maybe yeah. Um, and it was a company that helped UK people buy property abroad, um, but not necessarily. I, I, it was for investment more than anything. Sure. And that was kind of alien to me. Yeah. I always thought buying a property abroad, I don't know, it was like a villa in Spain or something like that, you know. Yeah. But uh, the guy that was, there was two guys, but the, the, the second guy started talking about, he, he, he bought a property in Miami to like let out. It's like a buy to let investment. And I thought, well, that sounds really cool. Yeah. It was in a building and there was like a sound recording studio that owned by Gloria Estefan or something underneath. It just sounded really cool. And I thought that it was like alien to me. Yeah. And then he said, yeah. um, the next place that's going to sort of blow up for investment properties, the Cape Verde Islands. And, Everybody like sort of looked at each other. And Cape, this is two thousand and three, four. I don't know whether you've heard of the Cape Verde Islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. In two thousand and three, you wouldn't have, mate, because no one knew it was there. And um, he kind of gave out these little brochures and what have you. And it was like, like these, you know, uh, derelict beaches, like some out of Robinson Crusoe. It was like, you know, mm. just, just palm trees and sand but nothing else yeah um and he got a relationship with a developer that was building out this this development over there and um uh he at, at the time again i was trying to earn more money i got into i'd learned how to make websites okay 
Uh, it was like the, the internet was still a relatively new thing, you know. Um, but there was like a free package that used to come in Microsoft that you could, I can't even remember what it's called. No, front page. That's what it's okay. called, front page. And I learned how to use it. Now, I could make it look pretty cool. So I made a website that was marketing the services of the company that I was working for oh, yeah. um, with the hope that someone would land on that page and whatever fees or commission or whatever it was that was generated, I could get some of it um, mm -hmm. as a referral fee. Yeah. Uh, but I put the details of this Cape Verde property on there. Mm. Um, and then it was definitely February 2004. Uh, the wife and I, we weren't married then, but yeah. we went to Spain for like a, a last minute uh, weekend around um, around Valentine's so, uh, day um time and um i got this stuff on the web and you know the place in the sun the the, yeah. the tv yeah. program yeah. in the sun well they did a very short like intro to cape verde at the end of a show it wasn't even about cape verde the whole show it was just a little thing yeah. at the end and essentially i got home um fired up the pc which is like this I mean, to, even if you think it's not that long ago, it was like this big, massive box monitor and that that I got yeah. in the spare room. Um, and uh, I've got all these emails, like inquiries about this property. I was like, I didn't even know whether the contact form even worked. <laughs> it's like, wow. it was like you know, I, no one had inquired before. Um, yeah. So uh, to cut a long story short, um, I was able to refer some people. There was a couple of people bought um invested in these properties and i got paid some commission and it was like blimey that that's that that was good wasn't it um i can i can probably do well and i just developed it from there I, I managed to reach out online then to um some other developers doing a similar thing yeah and um i gradually um I, the, the guys that i was i was working with at millfield i went i, I I sort of moved within the company and I started part time for them. Yeah. Um, and then I was doing my own thing with mm -hmm. this part time, just working out. If we got a little study at, at, at home, me and the wife had bought a, a place by then. Okay. Um, together. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, 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 the chap that I was working for at the time, part time, um, he, it, it became a part. I, I got a great relationship with him, and, um, and I kind of said, do you, "Do you mind if I have to answer my phone here or there?" Yeah. And um, he uh, and I did, and and I, I got you know sold some did did, did a couple of deals. Um, I remember the first proper one. You know, it was I remember writing the the guy's credit card details on the back of a scrap piece of paper. One while well, I seemed to put it through <laughs> the card chips. Matt, but um back in 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 the day then but uh I, I i earned some good money out of the first two deals which essentially kind of set me up i'd yeah. like bragging it was like it was like a year's salary in like one one of them deals it was, it was crazy um it was it was it was good so but at the time so the, the, the chat i was working for a uh, really good guy um he, he sort of pulled me in one of the one of the meeting rooms one afternoon and said, Greg, um, you, you've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said, you've, you've, you've got to go. Um, you, 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 quite frankly, you're taking the piss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're doing, you know, more of your own work than you are of mine. And it was the push that I needed. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I needed that push because I was, I was, comfortably getting a, a, a salary uh, from from him albeit you know part-time yeah. but I could have carried on that for years mm. um but I needed that push and I was lucky in that I'd done a couple of deals so I got some money in the bank and yeah I, I, I that's when I went on my own and it was yeah 2005 so wow uh, and, and then it and it sort of developed from there but that's amazing that's um it's, it's funny I mean there's there's elements in there where it's like, it seems like a TV show where you kind of, like you just said there, you've obviously got a job and you're working kind of three, four days a week or whatever it was. And then 
you're kind of doing deals on 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 the side, but you're doing it in front of like your boss and that. It must have been crazy. Yeah. Um, but well, I kind I kind of kind of would go out into the corridor or something, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that, I mean that's that's a, an amazing story. Um, and again, obviously, it got it got you to where you are now. Um, talk to me about like any help. Like, did you get any help? So when obviously Villa had told you that you're no longer needed and stuff, did you get any help from any organisations or anyone at Villa at all with regards to maybe getting another club or maybe just transitioning into something completely different at all? Well, when I first came across your podcast on online, mm. um, Danny, it was, uh, it was refreshing to see someone talking about the, 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 a transition um, mm. and an assistance after... Um, a sports career, albeit mine was fairly short lived, you mm. know, only for a couple of years. But um, the club, the, 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 what, I don't know what it's like now. And I, from what I can gather, I don't think it's changed too much. Mm. Um, if, if the truth be told, I can't uh, put my hands up and say that 100% because I, I haven't looked into it. But mm. I feel now that if there was a way that I could help people because I never had any help yeah. from from the club, um, from the, the the from any organisation, mm. and 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 I've seen a few organisations of late. I don't know online, and it, I think it's mainly when people um, have had a long career at a relatively high level. I mean, if you look at the, the, the kind of many involved in the game now. I dare say, you know, somebody, particularly if they're played in the Premier League, they don't need to have had a particularly long career to, to if they do things correctly, yeah. uh, financially, uh, to be set for a very long time financially. Mm. But for me, um, being an, 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 a, uh, you know, at the Villa, a, apprentice, whatever you want to call it, scholarship, couple of years and then released on, on peanuts, um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking up there. That's I'm at home at the moment. Yeah. I've got my first ever wage slip in a in a frame. Really? I'm all there. It's 127 pounds. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Proper old school YT wage. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> you know, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there was the exit trials um, yeah. that, that the Premier League put on. Um, but looking back, I think it was almost a bit of a tick box type of exercise mm. just to, to sort of show that there was some support there. And mm. I think in practice, I don't know anybody that ever did anything with a club. Mm. Um, I might be proved wrong. Maybe they did, but not to my knowledge that anybody did anything from uh, the exit trials. Yeah. Um, and I thought I'd done really well at the exit trials. You're there for like three or four days. It was mm. at Oakham over Leicestershire way. Yeah, he stayed in like a hostel type thing and played football in the morning, and then it led up to a like a, the last day, and you had games, and all the coaches you saw them, they got all the you know their clubs gear on, and they they yeah. came there. But I, I I don't know whether anybody actually got anything out of it. Um, mm. Be interesting to know if anybody ever has done, or whether they still do the exit trials. I don't yeah. know. Mm. Um, but no, I mean, I um. I mean, I even asked, literally, I remember the last day at Villa. I remember the last day we finished, we finished early. We didn't train in the afternoon. Yeah. We finished early. Um, so it's like, you know, you got your, you're ready to, you showered, ready to, to, to go. And it, it uh, the, 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 one of the coaches there, without naming names, and I, 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 I actually, I thought I'll reach out to him. And ask him because he had a relationship with a previous club that he was at. Yeah. And I thought, and they were they were a lot lower down the leagues at the time. And mm. uh, they've kind of come up a bit now since again without naming names. But at the time I thought, well, maybe he could arrange from, you know, put a good word in there. Because after all, he was the coach when I signed for, for, right. for the villa. He must have saw something yeah. uh, to, to offer me a contract in the beginning. And um he just kind of like laughed. It was, it, it, it was, you know, at 18, it was just like almost degrading. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, it, 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 it wasn't nice. Um, and uh, 
yeah, just 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 went home, um, and that was that. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, yeah, so and no, no, I can't say that there was any mm. any uh, any support. I mean, the only thing that, and again, you can't. It seems like a bit of a tick box exercise. You might recall yourself; you had to do a day and a half college when you was a YT. Yeah, I kind of got out of that purely because. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I think I did about two two sessions, and then the, yeah. the coaches pulled me out and just said they must have seen something. They just said, "Look, rather than going there, just come and train with like the older boys and that." So I I got oh, out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I was lucky in a sense, but from what I yeah. covered from the players that went there, they didn't really do anything anyway. It was like a, an afternoon yeah. off. So it was just an afternoon off. Yeah, it, it, it was jolly. I mean, the first the first year we did it in a sixth form of a of a, um, a local school here, uh, which was actually good in a way because I still speak to people that we met. Oh, okay. Then, then. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a it was a bit of a jolly. Um, and I think I, I don't know when you when you're in the the thick of it. Albeit I wasn't playing enough games yeah. um, and, and all the rest of it. But when you're in the thick of it, why am I doing a college course? And why, why do I need this? Mm. And that's and nobody, whilst you're contracted to a, a Premier League football club, nobody's going to tell you any different mm. because you don't want to admit to yourself that that is ever going to end. Yeah. Um, and I think if somebody had got hold of me and shook me, I still wouldn't have, you, you just, you, you're never, ever going to get through. Um, I, I don't think, it's got to take uh, somebody with, I don't know, an exceptional whatever attitude or something to take on board what somebody might say. No, you need to work hard just in case this doesn't happen. Yeah. But even yeah. even like the course that we did, it's like a GMBQ in business studies. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, in the, with, again, no disrespect, but what 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 did he actually equate to, really? Um, but so the, the only thing that happened when I got released is that I had to carry on the course for the third year because I wasn't I wasn't playing or training. I'd, I'd left the club, yeah, but I still had to go and do the course with the lads that were kept on. Oh no way. Do, do, do you see? What, so, like, in uh, at some uh, at a point, sort of midway through that third year, doing the the, the college course, I'd already got, I'd got a job, um, and I was supposed to go to college on a Monday morning, an all day Thursday, I think it was, okay, um, or something, something like that. So I couldn't go the all day Thursday because I was at work, yeah. you know. Um, I remember actually going to because the second year um and the third year so that they, they they the thing with the sixth form college didn't work out for one reason or another like if you think that we weren't focused when it was just us in a room at villa park which is what it was in the second and the third yeah. year imagine what it was like when there was girls about and yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> other, other six formers and stuff it just didn't didn't happen yeah. but i remember going when i had to go there because I was still, you got like a, a reduced sort of YT wage, if you like. I can't remember how much it was, about 500 quid or something like that a month. And I'm, you know, but I wasn't going to the the, the, the classes. Yeah. Um, to, 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 and they said, you need to, to come. And, I, and the one day I actually booked a day off work to go there. Um, or I booked the morning or something. But I was in all my, I was in a suit. Oh, and wow. they're all really, oh, they're all, all, all in tracksuits and trainers, yeah. and I just felt yeah. I felt like this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, it, 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 it was like I got it out of my system, and it was okay. But I felt it made me feel really like like shit. So I, I, I yeah. they were that I'm sure it was like a Monday morning. So they were I was like I don't know leaving to to go back to work, and they were going to Bodymore. I was like, oh, you know, yeah, I wish I was been, doing that. It must have been demoralising. I mean, it was. It's just, yeah, some of the things that used to happen, we're going back, like I said before, like 20 odd years now. And some of the things you look back and you just think, like, did they really make us do that? Like, did these things really happen? 
it was crazy. I mean, like I said there, the, the college thing, I kind of got out of that one. Um, and that wasn't even my choice. That was the coaches. But the, yeah. the stories that you tell in there, I do resonate with them to a certain degree because I've heard that from other people as well. Um, it, that is just, that is a bit strange. And, and with all that in mind, it's, it's probably a bit obvious for you, well, for me to think that you'd probably say more help is probably needed then when it comes to kind of athletes being released, transitioning, whether it be through their own uh, choice of maybe leaving or whether it's the clubs or through injury. Would you say then more help's needed? More help is definitely um, needed. Mm. But I think in general, I, I, I think... Um, the general public maybe have a sort of preconceived ideas mm. with sports people, uh, particularly yeah. footballers. You know, um, I remember going to interviews, for example, and obviously my last known employer was Aston Villa Football Club. Mm. Um, and I don't know, I, 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 the guy that I talked about earlier, that I still call Boss now, if ever I'd seen him, right, Boss. Yeah. I remember my interview with him. And I'm sure he asked me a question. He was quite blase about it. He said, so are you, are you clever or are you just a thick footballer? Something along those wow. lines, do you know what I mean? Wow. And, 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 I, and I think that's a preconceived idea. It still yeah. is now to a degree, you know. Um, but I think that there needs to be more um, support um, and, 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 and help. Yeah. Um, whether... <sighs> If it can be something that can be done when a player has got that news, that mm. they're not going to be kept on, or I mean, I know a lot of the podcasts that you that, that you do, um, Danny. You know, the people that may have had a you know a longer professional career mm. play for the first team in front of a full you know Villa Park or whatever it, it might be. It never happened for me, mm. but um, I can only relate to my experience over having a very short-lived career and there being no guidance or help uh, mm. from anywhere. And um, if, but it, I don't know if it's still the same. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah. But if, if, if there are people out there, you know, lads that have, have, have had that news and they don't know where to turn and, you know, reach, re, reach out and I, I'd be happy to, give you a, a, a pointer here and there and try and try and help because I remember I, I was you know it hit me hard it really did hit me hard um mm. you know um and I literally just it all sounded I know the way I explained it it all sounded like really cool and what have you but it wasn't it wasn't easy uh, particularly yeah. in the first yeah. instance because somebody's just told you that you know, what you've been trying to achieve for the past, you know, since you left primary school, mm. um, you know, you, 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 you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, or, you know, you're not, you're not good enough or, or whatever. Mm. Um, and it, it's, it's tough. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I mean, I never, luckily for me throughout my career, whenever I left the club, it was mainly my own choice. Or yeah. had an element of a say in it. I could see it coming. So I could always see yeah. kind of, okay, you get an inkling, don't you, whether you're going to be in the first team or whether you're going to be picked. Yeah. Or, and I, I, I never, one thing with me, I never really wanted to hear those words come out of a, a coach's mouth. Oh, we don't want you anymore. Um, I knew that it could potentially be coming because a, a new manager comes in, different style of play or whatever, or they bring their own players in or, you know, when they just ignore you or whatever. And it's like, okay, I can can read the, the writings on the wall here it was always yeah. me that instigated it because I always wanted to play especially when I got the, the like the the taste of the first team at 18 yeah. at Leicester I was like well I don't want to go back into the reserve, reserves or the youth team so I was still that yeah. young that I could play um, yeah. and I just thought you know what I've got another year in my contract I could stay here and, and just pick up the money and whatever but who knows what's going to happen after that so I wanted to go out and play first team and that's why I left I left yeah. on my contract, didn't get any payoff or anything and went to Bournemouth. And then my career kind of went to a professional level. It's kind of kicked off from there, really. Um, yeah. So I never really had that experience of, we don't want you anymore. And it's like, okay, well, what next? So uh, it was I, you know, there's more people that have had that 
than that have had what with respect uh, than, than what what you had then yeah. in that, in, if you look at the numbers it just you know it's just not the, the, the thing of the game and yeah. that's um and and i mean the thing is with me um i'm i'm 100 percent uh not bitter about any of it yeah about what happened you know i just but it's just interesting for me i don't know reassuring maybe i don't know that i only played 18 games yeah, yeah. i know my i think my my body just didn't it wasn't ready for full-time training or whatever yeah. it just used to break down and and i i spent more time um in the physio room with jim walker than i did on the training field <laughs> you know? uh, now, um, imagine, i mean with, with everything you said so with all that in mind then have you got any advice for for kind of any athlete i, I generally say any athlete purely because i don't want it just to be purely football yeah no i'm getting like athletes across the board now have you got any advice when it comes to kind of retirement process aiding your transition in a positive way and I'm talking at any stage in your career. So whether it be kind of youngster coming into the, the, uh, the sporting world or midway through your career or approaching retirement age in sport, what's your advice to anyone in that kind of situation at the moment? I think, uh, and it took me a long time from getting that news and, and then sort of falling down the leagues to changing my mindset to a real positive Yeah. My mindset and I dare say probably only the last say five or six years even okay. that I really really started to motor mm. like seriously motor uh, from a, a, a financial perspective work perspective just just life in general um, is having a positive mindset and, and trying to think of and come up with solutions rather than dwelling in on, yeah. on, on problems I know that might sound a bit wishy-washy and a bit sort of but it's very easy particularly if you've been um I don't know in 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 a bubble if you mm. like in a profession um to just not not try and new things and, and do new yeah. things and just have a positive outlook um yeah you might dwell on the fact that, okay, your career's come to an end at whatever point, whether it early doors or after 10, 20 years, mm. um, you could very easily dwell on the, on the, on the negatives of that. Um, try and pick out all of the positive things mm. that, 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 that have happened, the relationships that you've made over that time mm. that you can leverage to maybe do things in, in the future. Yeah. Um, I mean, it goes for all walks of life, really. I mean, there's, but but relating it to sports people, where I think sports people are relatively unique in a sense that they're going to retire earlier than your general, yeah. you know, Joe public. Um, so it probably hits them, and it would be easy to fall into a negative place. Mm. I mean, how many people? I used to do a lot of work with people um, in regards to pension and investments, as I said, back yeah. in my sort of financial services days. And I've always said myself that whenever I reach, I'm not going to, and again, no disrespect to Joe Public in a sense that you have a, a set retirement age, a, a salary and a set thing. Yeah. But I look at people when they've took a pension, it's like they're, they're looking at the clock the last, uh, the, la the last day, and they, they walk out, and they're sixty-five or whatever. Yeah. More often than not, they they they, 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 they start they stop functioning properly because they haven't got a purpose. Yeah. And the, your mind goes to mush, and the life expectancy from from anybody in that sort of uh, bracket mm. is it just it just goes. It's like yeah. that. I just think, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. just stay positive and look at uh, for, for for new new things, and because um, mm. otherwise, you know, it'd be very easy to fall into a negative place yeah. because what you, what you've loved doing for all that those years has finished. You know, get and you've, you need to find a new purpose that yeah. might be something in relation to what you've previously done. Yeah, um, you know, you see these guys that go into the punditry and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I mean, some of the guys, um, 
Lee Hendry, for example, a couple of years old, the, just the punditry. Uh, he's had his issues, yeah. um, uh, uh, you know, um, well documented, all the rest of it. Uh, I'm hoping he's in a good place now, but it's changing that mindset and yeah, um, and, and 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 using your past to your advantage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you're definitely right there. Um, listen, I've really enjoyed the chat. Really, really insightful. And uh, like I said before, thanks for coming on. Continue uh, to do what you're me. doing. Try and keep in touch along the way, and uh, just let everyone know. Before you leave, like obviously, again, what's the name of the company? Where can we find you on the socials? And yeah, take it from there. Yeah, yeah. So um, my company is called Chamberlain Property Company. Um, I'm on Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, my own uh, LinkedIn is Greg Walters uh, esque. Uh, Esq. Esquire. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, just hit me up on there, re re reach out. Um, I try and put stuff about what we do with the property development side. Mm. Um, all being well, you know, we've got a pipeline of um, exciting, quirky, cool projects that yeah. aren't your, your normal um, new build boxes. Um, um, so, yeah, you know, old, old buildings and, that's what we what, what we do. So yeah, um, reach out. There's a chamberlingpropertycompany.com. Uh, go on, go on there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Oh, and That's uh, amazing. Greg, 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 Greg Walters .co .uk, I think. Yeah. Drop awesome. drop on there. <laughs> Happy days now. That's amazing, cool. mate. Well, like I said, really, really appreciate you coming on. Enjoyed the chat, and uh, we'll try and keep in touch along the way. And uh, good luck okay. going forward. Thanks, Danny. Thank you very much. Speak soon. See you later. Take it easy.